Our coverage begins in Fairfax County, Virginia. Around the world, the, the divorce of Johnny Depp and Amber Heard getting uglier as we trial well, with actor Johnny Depp suing his ex-wife, actress Amber Heard, began. I struggled to think of a case like this where you had both sides really using the courtroom to fight the public opinion war. I think a lot of people want to dismiss this case and say that this is two celebrities and who cares. People don't always get the nuances of it because they're seeing the headlines. You had Johnny Depp and all of his fans came out of the woodwork. They were on TikTok. They were on the comment threads. People believed him. They didn't believe her. Now, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know. But that's how the social media frenzy works. We are now in a world where social media is used as a weapon. When people act like social media is completely irrelevant to the real world, that's plainly incorrect. And there is no denying the impact that social media posts and viral content can have on our real world. In 2012, Johnny Depp was arguably one of the biggest stars in the world. He had been sort of a teen heartthrob in the 80s with 21 Jump Street, and his star really built around these interesting characters that he portrayed on film. He was mainly known as being Tim Burton's muse. But then Captain Jack Sparrow with Disney shot him into huge startup. Amber Heard is 20 years younger and was building a career and name recognition within Hollywood, but she was certainly nowhere near the star that Johnny Depp was. Amber Heard and Johnny Depp met like most celebrity couples do. They were met while making a project. They made this movie called The Rum Diary. Meeting uh, an actress like Amber Heard, she's of another era, you know. I noticed that everybody smiled when he walked on set, and I thought, this is a good sign. Actually, it wasn't until 2011, two years later, that they took the relationship to the next level. Eyes up right here! The press lapped it up because people love good-looking Hollywood duos together, and these two fit the bill. I did notice something on your hand. Oh, the other one. Is that an engagement ring? In 2015, they got married, and they had a big, luxurious wedding on one of Johnny Depp's private islands. Yeah, it was mostly good. I'm trying to think. Until it got bad. <laughs> Only a year later did Amber Heard file for divorce. The actor's estranged wife saying she's a victim of domestic abuse. She's seen leaving court with visible bruises, asking a judge for a restraining order. She went to the courthouse with a bruise on her face. Johnny Depp's team said that she was just trying to expedite the process by filing this domestic restraining order and that it actually had no merit. It was pretty remarkable the speed at which they actually reached a divorce settlement, and it was for $7 million for Amber Heard. She had pledged all of that money to two charities, the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles and the ACLU, and they had a joint statement released at the time that neither party in the case was lying for financial gain. Tonight, fallen Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein expected to face charges. A year after their divorce settlement was reached, became the Me Too movement. Women will be silent no more! We saw a lot of people who had been living with the secrets and the shame for a very long time, feeling power in numbers. Amber Heard penned an op-ed for the Washington Post in which she talked about being a survivor of domestic violence. She never actually named her ex-husband, Johnny Depp, in the op-ed. The phrase that she used was, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse, but the timeline insinuates who she's discussing. Johnny Depp filed for defamation in Fairfax County, Virginia. He argues because of the allegations, his career has suffered. He sued her for $50 million and she said, fine, I'll sue you for 100 million. Amber Heard's counterclaim is that he defamed her through his attorney, Adam Waldman, who accused her of creating an abuse hoax. Now, the trial kicks off at 10 a.m. this morning here at the Fairfax County Courthouse. And the great news is that we're going to watch it all unfold in real time. So who were you here to support? Johnny Depp. I've been coming since it started. This is for all my Johnny Depp fans out there. I say hi to him before he pulled in for court. 100 people were allowed in each day, and they were given wristbands to be able to come in. 
and they were fighting the battle in the court of public opinion just as much as they were fighting inside the courtroom. The Depp Heard case was a civil defamation suit. Civil suit meaning it's for money. They're both public figures. There is a higher standard of defamation at play. It's about whether you maliciously went after this person with a reckless disregard of the truth. Truth is an absolute defense to a defamation claim. The question was, was Ms. Heard telling the truth when she generally claimed to be a victim of abuse? Having the cameras in the courtroom sensationalizes everything. It becomes a soap opera of sorts. Because there were cameras, people could edit videos online into TikToks, into rapid fire Twitter videos, and watch it almost like a gladiator ceremony. It reminded me of the OJ case, you know, in which you had all the world essentially watching what was an extremely disturbing trial. And this was an extremely disturbing trial. This was a defamation case. And before you knew it, we had all of these elements of domestic violence introduced. Do you remember the first time that he physically hit you? Yes. She was asking him about a tattoo he had altered because it initially said Winona forever. Winona Ryder was famously one of his ex-girlfriends. And I said, what, is it, what does it say? And he um, said, it says, why no? I, I just laughed because I thought he was joking. And slapped me across the face. But the cameras in the courtroom, I believe, also had an effect on the testimonies themselves, because these are two actors at the end of the day, right? He so said, you think it's so funny? You think it's funny, bitch? You think you're a funny bitch? And he slapped me again. And the entire um, argument on Depp's legal team was them saying that she is going to be giving the biggest performance of her life during her testimony. I just stared at him because I didn't know what else to do. And he slaps me one more time hard. If Ms. Heard could prove that any single event occurred and constituted abuse, then in theory, she should successfully defeat the defamation claim. Now, she took a bit of the kitchen sink approach and put on evidence of various incidents of alleged abuse. After you said, let's drown her before we burn her, Mr. Depp, you yes. said, I will fuck her burnt corpse afterwards to make sure she is dead. Did I read that right? You certainly did, yes. A large part of Amber Heard's case and defense has been communications from Johnny Depp about Amber Heard. Hopefully, that cunt's rotting corpse is decomposing in the fucking trunk of a Honda Civic. He says that it was an appeal to dark humor in a dark time. He did his best to explain his personality and to try to get sympathy from the jury and from the public at large. Johnny Depp took to the stand and he talked about his childhood and he talked about the abuse that he suffered at the hands of his mother. She was quite violent and she was quite cruel. He would later go on to testify saying that my father stayed with my mother and I wanted to do the same. You start to slowly realize that you are in a relationship with your mother. The entire reason he's taking his ex-wife to court is to clear his name. Today is actually my, the first uh, opportunity that I've been able to speak about this in full for the, for the first time. He said, I've never had the opportunity to address this. Yes, he did in the UK. The UK trial was a little different than this trial because Johnny Depp was not suing his ex-wife. Johnny Depp was suing a tabloid newspaper for calling him a quote-unquote wife beater in an article. So Johnny Depp's team had to prove that he was not a wife beater and he lost the UK trial for defamation. The judge found that Mr. Depp had committed at least 12 acts of domestic violence, including sexual violence. We were deprived of ever bringing in the fact that there was a judgment against Mr. Depp. Evidence that came in in the UK but did not come in in the US was a lot of consistent text messages and emails. There's a, a text message from Stephen Duders, his assistant, to Amber in which he says, Johnny's awake now, he doesn't remember anything. When I told him he kicked you, he cried. There was emails and text messages throughout, including to her doctor, including to the nurses. Those were all kept out. 
the evidence came in that should come in, and the, the judge was very fair to both sides. Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd, in this case, were the parties. They had different disclosure obligations. Depp's team wanted to demonize Amber every way they can, and at the same time, try to suppress any of the evidence of Mr. Depp's uh, domestic violence. There were therapy notes that go back to 2011, when Amber Heard was first dating Mr. Depp. Detailed notes, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. To see that contemporaneous reporting all those years would have been very, very powerful, in my view, to a jury. But none of that came in because the judge determined that those were out-of-court statements. Any good trial attorney, and I think both sides did this, they're going to develop a theme from Mr. Depp's perspective. Their theme throughout was that I am not the abuser. Never did I myself reach the point of uh, striking misheard in any way, nor have I ever struck uh, um, any woman. If anything, I'm the one who was abused. And he goes, why are you accusing me of domestic violence when I should be the one accusing you? Mm -hmm. Yep, the plot thickens. The plot, 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 plot thickens. A man has, uh, he has to live within a system and a society that does not believe that he can be a victim. Men do not traditionally come forward. Miss Heard, in her frustration and in her rage and her anger, she would uh, strike out. Of all the domestic violence victims, you know, it's 85% women and 15% uh, men. I do believe strongly that men are underreported. And then they basically spent the remainder of the trial just trying to poke as many holes in as many of Miss Heard's stories as they possibly could. She said that she was going to give all of her divorce proceedings to charity. You have not donated $7 million of your divorce settlement to charity, right? I have not been able to fulfill those uh, those uh, obligations yet. I did not hurt you. I did not punch you. I was hitting you. Another audio clip, she appeared to be mocking him over his claims of being abused by her. Hey, and see what the, see what the jury judge thinks. Tell the world, Johnny. Tell them Johnny Depp. I, Johnny Depp, man, I'm, I'm a victim of domestic violence. Yes. I, no, it's a fair fight. It sees how many people believe or side with you. It was really hard as a viewer who advocates for victims of domestic violence to learn that Heard had used that social bias, that misconception, in a manipulative way. With all due respect, I wasn't saying it because he's a man. I was saying it because he's a man who beat me up for five years. Mr. Depp is your victim, isn't he? <sighs> no, ma'am. Depp's legal team brought forth their former couple's counselor. There was violence between, from Mr. Depp toward Amber, correct? Yes, you're right. With Ms. Ms. Hurd, he was triggered, and um, they engaged in what I saw as mutual abuse. I will tell you in all my years, I've never heard the term, ever. When we're talking about domestic violence, we're talking about a primary aggressor. In the context of retaliatory abuse, sometimes it's um, you beginning uh, that exchange. But until you're in a situation in which someone is hurting you, you don't understand the dynamics that are at play there. I was the love of my life, but he was also this other thing. And that other thing was awful. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. What happened? Motherfucker. 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 Members of the public, look at recordings as being a little bit underhanded. You got this going? Oh, really? It just goes to the overarching question of which party had the jurors' trust. Emma Heard has submitted quite a few photos uh, into evidence of her injured. With respect to photos of Miss Heard, I think that the jury most likely found the testimony of the gentleman from TMZ to be very compelling. Miss Heard was filing a uh, restraining order at a courthouse in downtown Los Angeles. So um, I dispatched camera people to that location. We would only ever send people there if we had been tipped off. And the TMZ former employee effectively said that that was staged. When jurors see that, they're gonna lose a lot of faith in anything else that's presented visually or otherwise. I did not call TMZ or any other news source or paparazzi source, no one. Unfortunately for Ms. Hurd's camp, some of the more graphic 
significant events were the ones that I think were most hotly contested. The night in Australia, there's still so many questions about this, this fight, which, uh, you know, allegedly led to Johnny Depp's fingertip being severed. He alleges that she threw two vodka bottles at him. It made contact and shattered everywhere. And then I looked down and realized that the, the, the tip of my finger had been severed. Amber Heard has said on the stand she doesn't have a clear recollection of how things unfolded, but she has alleged that he sexually assaulted her with a bottle. I felt this pressure. I felt this pressure. He <laughs> owned my pubic bone. <laughs> he said he was and he was punching me. <laughs> I just saw his arm. I could feel his arm moving. There were a couple of points in the trial that should have never come out so publicly. I didn't know if the bottle that he had inside me was broken. I didn't know if he would know if it was broken or not. And I just remember thinking, please, God, please. please. I hope it's not broken. Survivors have uh, reached out. They have been triggered. I know that myself, I got triggered. My back was torched, but you hit me in the face. <laughs> Ew, this is so cringe. Guilty. A lot of times jurors, whether male or female jurors, they don't want to see a woman cry. They don't find it believable. Here she is being forced to recount all these things. And what do they say? Oh, she cried. What's wrong with these people? Would you please stand and face the jury? Even though past contentious court cases have been televised, there hasn't been TikTok and there wasn't Twitter to cover these trials in real time. That really changed the course of, of this trial. The jurors were not sequestered. The judge would instruct them each night not to do any di additional research. This is a long proceeding spanning two months. I just think it's unrealistic to think that the jurors stayed off of social media. And once you're on them, you can't avoid it. This monster of algorithms at play, where even if you've never followed Amber Heard or Johnny Depp, you were inundated on your social media feeds with aspects of this trial. And so the way that people got uh, so much of the action from the courtroom was through these videos on social media platforms. TikTok just went crazy. The ability to do short films, mocking someone or giving your opinion about something is what TikTok is, and they certainly did. Leaned back and headbutted me square in the nose. The breadth and depth of what we've seen, and particularly the attacks and abuse aimed at, at Ms. Heard, uh, is something remarkable. Can you imagine being a survivor and seeing the mockery that she's endured? If you actually watch it live on YouTube, there's a live uh, feed. And every comment I saw while I was watching it for six weeks were pro Depp. If you want to go viral, you're going to want to talk about the events in favor of Johnny Depp. I really think it has a lot to do with Johnny Depp wanting the cameras to be in the room in the first place. I think he was aware of the public's perception of him. Johnny Depp was a, was a star. He was a lot of people's first crush. And so there is a parasocial attachment that adds another layer of investment. 93% of the accounts posting have been in favor of Johnny Depp. I did not expect for my TikToks to get over 6 million views. It's been great to see that so many people are on his side and so many people agree with me and think that, you know, she is a liar and a bad actress. You also had segments of YouTube that had never covered anything even close to this trial, all of a sudden pivoting. People going from fewer than 100,000 subscribers to over half a million subscribers in a matter of weeks. I really don't know anything about this. In any really big case, you'll see a lot of fascinating kind of banding together of people. There are people who love Johnny Depp and genuinely adore him and think that he is a great man and are very worried about him. You also have men's rights factions of the internet contributing to this conversation, along with 
people who love true crime. You have domestic abuse survivors who don't feel like Amber Heard was a reflection of them. But what are your thoughts on Amber Heard? I myself am a survivor of domestic abuse, and I felt like I could see right through um, when she was on the stand and the things she would say, that manipulation that they do. I'd like to remind us all that all victims are not the same. Ms. Heard is, is what we would call the imperfect victim. As a society, we have a stereotype of what a victim of uh, domestic violence looks like. You weren't scared of him at all, were you? This is a man who tried to kill me. Of course, it's scary. They usually have the battered bruises. There aren't any medical records reflecting that you sought medical treatment for any of these injuries, are there? I did not seek uh, medical treatment after Australia, no. Not for the rape? No, I did not want to tell anyone. It is a certain amount of crying, but not too much. A certain amount of anger, but not too much. Victims and survivors of domestic violence each are different, and they have different experiences. There is no perfect victim. If you didn't take pictures, it didn't happen. If you did take pictures, they're fake. If you didn't tell your friends, you're lying. And if you did tell your friends, they're part of the hoax. The litigants each really tapped in pretty explicitly to the larger social media and the cultural narratives that have been surrounding the case. No woman ever before Amber Heard ever claimed that Mr. Depp raised a hand to her. This is Me Too without any Me Too. The verdict is in. They're going to read it at 3 o'clock. All right. We have a verdict? Yeah. No shit. <laughs> Jurors deliberated 13 hours. Verdict delivered. Delayed. He won. OK. That's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting fallout for a lot of domestic abuse survivors. I think from Mr. Depp's perspective, his legal team put on an incredible case and pulled a rabbit out of a hat. It's apparent from the jury's verdict, they didn't believe anything she said. The jury awarded Johnny Depp $10 million in compensatory damages and $5 million in punitive. So, um, but then they also awarded $2 million to Amber Heard in compensatory damages. So then if, if the counterclaim says that she never committed an abuse hoax, then I don't understand how you could have both things be true. I have been glued to the TV for the last six weeks. So it will be nice to get my life back, but I am probably even happier just knowing that justice was served. What was his reaction in the moment? I think just an overwhelming sense of relief. Social media certainly took off in a way that uh, we've seen high profile trials before, but do you believe the jurors saw any of that, were swayed by any of that? No, I don't think there's any reason to believe that the jurors violated their oath. And that suggestion was, was disappointing to hear. I don't know how they can possibly come to that conclusion. You could not escape it. Do you see any larger message beyond the case you tried? No. I mean, frankly, we don't. Uh, we're, we're here to talk about the case that we tried, right? Um, we encourage all victims to come forward, have their day in court, which is exactly what happened in this case. When we heard the verdict, we were very disappointed. We have struggled for years to ensure um, that survivors' voices are heard. It turned out that the jury believed that, it, you know, it was defamation, which is, uh, by the way, a control tactic by a lot of abusive persons in order to, to maintain control. Defamation cases will be exerted more often. It won't be pretty. There will be plenty of plaintiffs who will file and pursue claims that may not be winning claims, but they'll take that chance. 
So if we imagine a, a college student who is a victim of sexual assault, who wants to tell her story, the worry is that we might need to start counseling victims that telling their stories can have a very significant financial price. What happens if, if I get ambered? Um, because we're beginning to hear those terms, or we heard the term that uh, Friday, I will dep you. We are already seeing other celebrities who are accused of sexual violence filing defamation suits against their accusers. The Me Too movement at its core was about, about victims coming forward and telling their stories. We're women and we're proud. We won't be shut down. I do wonder whether there will be that power in numbers again, whether people will be willing to go forward knowing they could get sued for defamation. I strain to recall a case like this where you had a celebrity who had fallen from grace use a public proceeding in a court trial to rehabilitate that image. And that's what he did. And winning was a welcomed byproduct. I think looking back, people are going to think of this as the TikTok trial, the social media trial, the fan trial, because his fans really came out in such full force and really having fun uh, with what were some pretty horrific claims. This trial really demonstrates the power of the internet and how campaigns for public opinion can shape real world effects. So whether you're in politics, media, entertainment, this presents itself as a playbook. You know, I saw, oh, is Me Too over? And uh, you darn tootin' it's not. How do we deal with something like what just happened? She wrote an op-ed about her domestic violence. The op-ed and the social media were weaponized against her. So what does that mean to someone else who may want to talk about this? It's, it's going to be tough. We can do it. I never say no. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.